the happiest careers and jobs. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we do that, gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about opportunities, careers, personal finance, and college degrees that will lead you to success. And we also talk about avoiding some of the common financial traps that so many people fall for. If you're new here and that sounds like something that interests you, go ahead and if you haven't done it already, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss an opportunity. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. Now, as a personal finance channel, usually what I'm gonna be talking about here is careers and degrees and whether they're a good opportunity or not, financially speaking. I go over the most important things when it comes to your personal finances, like doing your research, having a plan, having a backup plan, and always gently tapping the like button. But when it comes to careers that make you the most happy, well, I have no idea and that's why I make YouTube videos. No, but seriously, happiness is extremely subjective and it really does depend on the person. Some might love like a really boring government desk job where you're in an air-conditioned room and you barely do any work all day, whereas other people would absolutely hate that. That would be their literal definition of hell. They wanna be outside, working with their hands, doing something active. So when it comes to choosing a career, of course you don't wanna go with just the one that makes the most money. There are a lot of other factors to consider and I've talked about this before, but I think the best way to think about this is the Japanese concept of Aikigai. Aikigai basically means it's your reason for being and what it basically is is four different areas that are very important. So you wanna find a good balance between what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and also what you can be paid for. If you can nail all four of those things, then you've got your personal Aikigai. So just to use a really quick example, let's say your passion is painting, you love painting, you're very good at painting. You could argue that the world needs painting. I mean, everybody loves staring at beautiful paintings. I said painting a lot of times in that sentence. Oh, thank God you noticed. But there's a good chance that it won't fall under the category of what you can be paid for. So maybe instead of painting, you could consider doing something like graphic design, where you might have a better chance of making a good amount of money with that, and it kind of fits all of those other ones as well. Or if you really want to do painting, you're probably not gonna be able to find a job, but you can get a little bit creative with it, you can get a little bit entrepreneurial, maybe start a YouTube channel, and then you can find success. The YouTuber ZHC would be a perfect example of this. They channel their creative artistic abilities in such a way where they can entertain people on YouTube and they've created an entire business out of it. Now you also hear that cookie cutter advice of just go for your passion, don't worry at all about the money, just you know, blindly pursue your passion. And I think that's really bad advice as well. Numerous studies, numerous statistics have shown that having more money does make you happy up to a certain point. Usually it's around $75,000 a year, although that study was done about 10 years ago. So it's more like 80, 85,000 now. But you get the idea. Your happiness absolutely does increase up to a certain point. After that point, it doesn't really matter as much, but you want to get to that certain level or at least put yourself, set yourself up so you can get into a career where you can maximize your happiness. Now on top of that, financial issues are one of the main reasons for people's unhappiness. For instance, financial issues are the number one reason for divorce. So if you just blindly ignore your finances, you're probably going to set yourself up for a lifetime of unhappiness. However, if all you care about is your finances, all you care about is making money, you're also going to set yourself up for a lifetime of unhappiness. So again, it's all about finding the balance and it's gonna be different for everyone. Now, with that being said, number 10 on the list is going to be assistant controller. No, 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 that's not the type of controller that I'm talking about. So this is a type of job that you can go for, generally speaking, when you're an accountant, this is one of the verticals that you can go up one of the career paths that you can follow. So as the assistant controller, you would be helping the main controller with different accounting tasks and you would be making sure that the day-to-day -day operations in terms of the numbers are going really well, as well as making sure that the company is up with the different legal requirements. Now this one came out to have a happiness score of about 4.02 out of five, which is excellent. And they also make around $73,000 a year. So it's pretty close to that $80,000 a year number that I talked about before. Now usually you're gonna start in the public sector or maybe with a consulting firm. As you progress through your career, you can get higher paying industry positions. Now accountants, that's one of the most common jobs in the United States. There's 
millions of accountants. And assistant controller and controller tend to be one of the highly coveted positions that a lot of accountants want to move into. Now, as an assistant controller, you'll be preparing the financial statements within a company. You'll also be making sure that the company's financial statements fall within laws. An assistant controller will be working to reduce losses that could be caused by incomplete information or even sometimes fraud. Now, an assistant controller, of course, is gonna have to have good financial and accounting skills because after all, they probably were an accountant. But on top of that, they're a little bit more social than your average accountant. So you're gonna have to be communicating with a lot of other people within the company. You're also going to be making reports where you summarize what you've learned. Now, most people in this position probably have an accounting degree, but some people get into it with a finance degree as well. Now, a lot of the time, this controller position does take several years to work up to. You're gonna have to get certified and get some experience, but it can be a good one to get into. It pays pretty well, and it also makes people happy. Number nine on the list is going to be a network engineer. Now, network engineers, also referred to as network architects, are basically going to be responsible for all of the communication within a company. So we're talking about the connectivity of different networks within the company, such as data, information, texting, voice calls, video calls, etc. This one has a bliss score of 4.02 out of five, which is good, and they also make about $70,000 a year. So there's a lot of different industries that network engineers can work in, and depending on what industry you're in, you're probably gonna have different specializations. But basically, you want people to be able to communicate with each other in such a way where the data is stored for one. For two, it's very effective, it's very fast, there's not any you know, technical issues, anything like that. And three, it's safe, so it's not easy for someone to break into your network and steal all of your data. So obviously you're gonna have to have good technical skills, but you're also gonna be working with a bunch of people within a team, you're gonna be talking to people pretty much all day long, so you have to have good communication skills and soft skills as well. You wanna be somebody who's very good at problem solving because you're basically gonna be dealing with problems all day long. Now this this is one of the careers on this list that you can actually get into sometimes without a degree. Sometimes you only have to get a certification in order to become a network engineer. A lot of network engineers do have degrees, but it's not something that you absolutely have to have. Most of the higher paying positions, you are gonna find mostly people who have bachelor's degrees in either computer science or information technology. And this is one of those careers where you're constantly gonna have to be learning new things, problem solving, you're probably gonna be taking continuing education credits all the time, but for the right person that can be great. A lot of people always want to be lifelong learners and just be constantly absorbing new information. Next one on the list, number eight is going to be one that's not as high paying, but it still has a very high bliss score which is going to be executive administrative assistant. And basically what you're gonna be here is you're gonna be an assistant to an executive within a company. You're gonna be taking a lot of their calls, screening their emails, making sure they don't forget to give their wife flowers on Valentine's Day, you know, all that important stuff. Now this one came out with a bliss score of 4.04 out of five, and they make only about $45,000 a year. However, I suspect a lot of people employed in this position are maybe only working part-time, and so that might be bringing down the salary a little bit. So if anybody's ever worked at a very busy job or maybe there's some entrepreneurs watching this where they get a lot of emails every single day you know how distracting that they can be if there are people who are constantly emailing you expecting you to get back to them right away it can be extremely distracting and most of the time you don't have to really get back to them all that fast, let's be honest. But once in a while, there is an email that's truly urgent and that's why you always have to check it. It's hard to get any deep work done if you're constantly checking your email and probably checking Slack and your text messages and all these other things. It's almost impossible to get any meaningful work done. That's why a lot of these people will have an assistant who does all of those day-to-day -day tasks for them and kind of screens people in order to tell them what's important and what can wait for later. Of course, you'll be doing a lot more than that. You'll be assisting them with all kinds of other different tasks, but that's basically what it is, you're kind of just taking some of the workload off of the executive. A lot of the time, these are the people that will decide whether someone who's trying to get a hold of somebody who's high up in a company gets a hold of them or not, and how they get a hold of them as well. So they might be the person who decides whether you get a hold of someone if you're trying to get a job, for instance, or you're trying to sell the company a product. Now, in most cases, you don't have to get a bachelor's degree, of course, in order to get into this position. Only a high school degree is required. Now, interestingly enough, I know somebody who worked as an executive administrator 
administrative assistant, they actually worked in Hollywood with a famous movie director. They did such a great job that they basically became this person's like favorite employee. Eventually they were able to work their way up and get better and better jobs and they always worked with this person and made sure that they networked with new people and they were able to become a producer in Hollywood. So they're now a huge producer in Hollywood. So getting into positions like these, sometimes they will allow you to network with a lot of other people within the industry that you're in. Number seven on the list is going to be a construction manager. And basically what you're gonna be here is kind of like a project manager within the construction industry. So you might be put in charge of building a particular house or a particular building, and you're basically like the top person on that site. Everybody is gonna to report to you. Sometimes you are the top, top person, and sometimes you'll be reporting to maybe one person that's above you. You'll be seeing out the project all the way from the beginning where it's just a thought in somebody's mind, and then it's gonna be a write-up, and then maybe they'll make a stick figure house out of it, and then eventually they will build the house itself. Now this one comes in with a bliss score of about 4.06 out of five, and they make around $77,000 a year, which is pretty good. I think a lot of the scores on this list are a little bit lower than they are in reality, and BLS, it shows that construction managers make more than this, but a lot of the people responding to uh, this list, this survey, are probably young people, so they haven't gotten into their later years in their career. So the median pay on BLS, for instance, is gonna be $95,000 a year. There's 476,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 8%, which is much faster than average. So this one doesn't quite make it into the six-figure club, but it's pretty close, and it definitely meets that $80,000, $85,000 a year threshold. Now, surprisingly enough, a lot of the large construction firms do want you to have a bachelor's degree and experience in construction. So you basically have to have white-collar skills as well as blue-collar skills. Not that many people have both. There's some people that will get a degree in construction management, but they don't have any practical skills. And so they're going to have a very hard time finding a job. So if you're interested in this one, I would highly recommend if you're getting a degree in construction management to also get some experience on the side where you're working with your hands and building houses yourself. Number six on the list is going to be a logistics manager. So logistics management is all about managing the supply chain of a company. I like to give this example. Amazon is a great great version of a company that does logistics the right way. They've pretty much changed the game forever because of the fact that they're so good at logistics management. They're able to literally, you know, you click something and then the next day it arrives right at your door. So basically you are going to be controlling the movement of different materials and where they are stored within a company, you know, their different warehouses, etc. all the way to getting the product to the very end where the person who purchased it, the customer actually gets it and doing that as efficiently as possible in terms of time as well as cost savings. Now, this one is going to have a 4.07 bliss score, which is excellent, and you're going to make around $62,000 a year. And like I said before, that's definitely lower than what it actually is. So out of all the years that I've ordered stuff from Amazon, I think they've only made one mistake out of everything. And, you know, they quickly fixed it when I contacted them. And it's honestly mind blowing to look into the actual statistics and how many boxes that Amazon ships, etc. It's hard to even imagine how they're able to keep everything everything organized and do it in such an efficient and fast way. But because of the fact that they mastered supply chain and logistics, they're now one of the biggest companies in the world. So a lot of the time you're going to see people with college degrees. You can actually see people work their way up from the bottom in this career, but usually they're going to have college degrees. Then they're going to get a ton of on-hand experience and sometimes even some certifications. Number five on the list is going to be a senior application developer. So a senior application developer would be managing a team of software engineers and software for developers in order to create or upgrade an existing application. There's a lot of careers within technology industry, whether it be software development, software engineering, that are really, really well paying and the companies treat their employees, especially the good ones, like royalty. Everybody's heard about all the perks you get for working for a Silicon Valley company like Google, for instance. Free lunches, time off in the middle of the day, you've got gyms on site, you've got a doctor on site, a pharmacy on site. It's crazy what they do to those people. Complimentary, free, whatever you want. They are just like spoiled workers. But with this one, your bliss score is going to be 4.08 out of 5, and they're going to make around 86,000 a year, which again is way lower than what it is in reality. Number four on the list is going to be a construction superintendent. So basically, you know, before we talked about the construction project management sort of career, this one is more about running the day-to-day -day tasks that you have to have on a site. So for instance, you might make sure that they have enough cement. You might hire and fire people. You realize 
realize that you're going to need an external subcontractor to come in and do something for you, you would find them and hire them and make sure that you're paying them a good wage where they're going to do a good job for you, but you're also not going to get scammed. This one has a 4.1 out of 5 career bliss rating and they make around $68,000 a year. Now for this one, generally speaking, you're going to be working your way up from the bottom. So you're going to be someone who is a blue collar worker and you're just going to be someone who really excels at that and then you're going to work your way into this position. Most of the time people do not need college degrees in order to get into these types of positions. Number three on the list is going to be a senior sales representative. Now a senior sales representative is generally going to have years of experience selling the types of products that you're selling at your company. So they're going to be not only really good at sales, but they're also going to have a lot of technical expertise in whatever types of products they're selling. They're also going to have a really good idea of the market in general, and they're going to know their customers really well. With this one, it has a 4.19 out of 5 bliss rating, which is excellent, and they make around $67,000 a year, according to the survey, which is probably quite a bit lower than it actually is. Now, I always say when it comes to sales jobs, it's very important that you choose your industry as well as the business that you work for very carefully. If you're an excellent salesman, but you're in an industry or you're working for a business where there's just not that much opportunity, maybe it's like a dying industry, for instance, you're probably not going to make very good money. But if you're a good salesman and you're working in a booming industry, something like maybe finance or technology, even if you're just a decent salesman, you can make really good money. So when it comes to being a salesman, it's very, very important what industry that you work in. For instance, it's not uncommon to see life insurance salesmen make multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, whereas it would be very rare to see a car salesman making multiple hundreds of thousands. Number two on the list is going to be a senior quality assurance engineer. So so this is a relatively new position. It's kind of similar to a DevOps engineer where you're basically going to be testing a product to make sure that it can actually get out to the consumer as fast as possible. You don't want to create a product and then you, you know, put it out to the consumer and then you find out it has a bunch of bugs and glitches and you've just lost thousands of potential customers. So what they do is they create different tests that you can use on the software to make sure that it can hold up when you bring it into the market. Now this one has about a 4.23 out of 5 bliss rating and you make around 82,000 a year, which is definitely on the lower side. So basically you're going to be trying to find different bugs, glitches, and different ways that you can make the performance of a website or a software better. Now, most people who get into this job, again, will have a degree in either computer science or software engineering. However, you do see the rare person who's able to work themselves into a position like this without getting a degree or by having another degree that's kind of semi-related like maybe mathematics or statistics. Number one career on the list that had the best happiness bliss score rating is going to be real estate agent. This is going to be a person who assists other people in selling or buying a house. Their bliss score rating is 4.26 out of 5 which is the highest on the list by a mile and they make around $53,000 a year. That's right, the Graham Steffens and the Meet Kevins of the world might be right after all. Now, according to BLS, they make around $50,000 a year. There's 477,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 2%, which is a little bit slow. But the great thing about this one is you can get into it with just a high school diploma or an equivalent. This is really good, especially considering the fact that you don't have to get a college degree. There's not a very high barrier to entry. You could probably become a real estate agent within a few months after graduating from high school. And the really cool thing about becoming a real estate agent is it's kind of like a sales job where you're paid for the results that you get not necessarily the time that you put in. So it's a little bit entrepreneurial in that regard and there's pretty much no ceiling. There's real estate agents that make millions and millions of dollars a year. Now a really good normal job might pay you $50 an hour, but as a real estate agent, you're gonna get paid every single time you help your client buy or sell a house. This can be a good thing or a bad thing if you don't help your clients buy any houses or if you can't find any clients, then unfortunately you're not gonna get paid. But if you get really good at this and you're just selling houses left and right, let's say you make like $10,000 on each house that you sell and if you're selling a house every single week that would be five hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year if you haven't done it already go ahead gently type the like button in order to defeat the evil youtube algorithm make sure to smash the subscribe button ring the notification bell and comment down below any thoughts comments criticisms etc that you have on the video and before you go make sure to check out my other videos right here i made them just for you